welcome back to my channel. If you are visiting this space for the first time, you are also highly welcome. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the female external genitalia. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the different structures that make up the female external genitalia, also highlighting some details that you should know as students of anatomy. The entire female reproductive system is subdivided into two compartments. We have the internal genitalia, just as the name implies. These are group of organs that are located within the body cavity. If we try to use this image by the side, this is where we have the internal genitalia organs highlighted here in yellow. So you see that within this space, we have a collection of organs that are located within the body cavity and are responsible for exerting reproductive functions. One second compartment is the external genitalia. Just as the name also implies, external it means is a collection of organs or structures that are located outside the body space. So if you try to use this image by the side, you see this region that is carved out also in dotted yellow has the external genitalia. And if you look at this region, you see that it is located on the body surface. And we have a number of structures encompassing the female external genitalia. So the female external genitalia can also be referred to as a vulva. And this region is made up of a number of substructures. The first structure we'll be looking at is the labial majora. This labial majora is also referred to as the altalic. We try to use this image by the side. This is where we have the labial majora here, harrowed in yellow. If you look at this structure, you see that it is the outer bigger leaf that is located in the vulva. And it is majora because it is thicker and it is located in the outer region. So this is what is harrowed here in yellow. The homologous structure of this labial majora in male is the scrotum. The difference is that the scrotum is located behind the penis, while the labial majora is seen to form the alignment of the vulva at this external region. So we have the labial majora at this external region. Why deep to the labial majora, we have the labial minora. We also use this image by the side. This is where we have the labial minora here, herald in blue. Just as the name implies labia, but minora means it is smaller. So this is the inner smaller lip. And this is what is herald at this point. So you see that we have the outer bigger lip that is the majora, and we have the inner smaller lip that is the minora. Then if you drive more anteriorly, we have the mons pubis. This is where we have the mons pubis here, harrowed in white. This mons pubis is seen to be made up of fatty part. Okay. This mons pubis is seen to be formed at the anterior region where the two leaves of the labial majora meet at this anterior edge. So if you look at it, this is where we have the labial majora. And if you go more to the anterior region, just around the region where we have the pubic bone. Remember that the pubic bone is located in the anterior region here. So underlying this most pubis is where we have a sub-region of the hip bone, which is the pubic bone. And this is why it is so referred to as the most pubic. So this region is seen to be formed at the anterior region where the leaves of the labial majora meet at this anterior surface. Then if you go more posteriorly behind, you also have a region where the labial majora also meet at this posterior head. And this is referred to as the posterior labial commissure. This is what is harried there at this point. So in the anterior region, the labial majora have a meeting point at the mons pubis, while at the posterior region, they also have a meeting point at the posterior labial commissure. Then the next structure is the clitoris. If you also look at this image, this is where we have the clitoris here, harrowed in red. As a matter of fact, if you want to describe this region that is harrowed in red, specifically, you say that it is the glance of the clitoris. The clitoris is beyond what is seen here on the outside. We have the chunk or the greater part of the clitoris embedded within the body. But the region that is seen here, this outer region, is referred to as the glance of the clitoris. This glance of the clitoris is at the point where the two labial minor are also meeting the anterior region. Remember we described the labia majora meeting at this anterior region where the most pubis is formed. The labia minora is also seen to meet at this anterior region where the glass of the clitoris is formed. So this is how the pattern of the creation of the different sub-regions of the external genitalia are formed. The homologous structure of the clitoris in male is the penis. If you go back to the structure of the penis, you see that the penis seems to be elongated. So in case we are had during examination, the homologous structure of the clitoris in male is the penis. 
In our subsequent lecture, we'll be describing the anatomy of the clitoris. And in that lecture, we will be establishing how the clitoris is related to the penis. Then you'll be able to see that truly the homologous structure of the clitoris in males is a penis. Posteriorly, there's also a point where the labia minora would meet. And this region is what is harrowed there at this point. And this is referred to as the fourchette. This fourchette is a fold of skin that is created around the posterior region where the two inner leaves of the labia minora meet. During sexual intercourse or vaginal birth, this fourchette is also seen to undergo some form of expansion so as to accommodate the head of the baby and also the penis during sexual intercourse. So this is what is created around this region. It is also important for us to add that we have a space created between the two inner leaves of the labia minora, and this is referred to as a vestibule. The vestibule is what is carved out here in this region. So this opening is created to allow for the opening of the urethra and also the vaginal canal, because we know that the urethra and the vaginal canal will need to communicate with external environment. And it is through this vestibule that this communication will be established. If you look at it, this is where we have the opening of the urethra here in the anterior region, which is seen to be a smaller opening. Right behind it, we have the opening of the vagina canal, which is seen to be a larger opening. So you see that the opening of the vagina canal is larger and is posteriorly placed. So these are the two openings that you have within the vestibule, which is the opening created between the two inner leaves of the labia minora. It's also important for us to add that the opening of the vagina canal is covered with a membrane that is referred to as the hymen. So at this outer region, we have a membrane covering the opening of the vagina canal. And this may be seen to be complete or partial depending on the individual. We also have the dot of two glands opening into the vestibule. So we have the dot of the skin's gland or the lesser vestibular gland. This lesser vestibular gland is what is highlighted here in red. And you see that this gland is located on both lateral sides of the opening of the urethra. Remember, this is where we say we have the opening of the urethra. So on both sides of this opening is where we have the skin's gland or the lesser vestibular gland. This gland also releases its dot into the vestibule. And this is what is highlighted here in yellow. What posteriorly behind, you have the Bartholin's gland or the greater vestibular gland. And this is what is highlighted here in blue. These glands are located on both sides of the opening of the vagina canal. They also have the dot also releasing their secret into the vestibule. And this is what is highlighted here in white. So these are the structures that opens into the vestibule. So you see that this space that is created between the two leaves of the labia minor is not created for fancy. It is created to receive the opening of different structures. So thanks for watching this video. Let's continue to stay tuned.